Hello everyone and welcome to another discussion video here on the channel where I want to put forth a simple question because we just got some pretty big news if you're still invested in the A Song of Ice and Fire franchise, Game of Thrones, etc, etc. And that's that House of the Dragon will be dropping this year in August. And we got a few new character posters as well. And so the whole Game of Thrones fandom came together and mentioned season eight, because that is what I am seeing in all of the common sections across the land. <laughs> no one really discussing House of the Dragon, aside from saying it feels unnecessary, and they're just getting into Game of Thrones. I don't want to seem like I'm twisting a narrative as these posts stayed up for longer, more and more people who seemed genuinely hyped for this show did show up. So I'd like to add that small correction that the conversation did start skewing towards just House of the Dragon hype. And I even put out this poll. And while the results aren't great for House of Dragon, they're certainly more positive than I thought they would be. And for a perfectly fair reason, I'm not saying that's inappropriate or just disrespectful or anything like that. I totally get it. It's what comes to my mind first, honestly, whenever I see House of the Dragon and I think about how that IP just crashed in value. And it's pretty apparent this is HBO's attempt to just try and revitalize it. But it inevitably asks the question for me, what if it's good? What if House of the Dragon is really good? Yeah, I'm just, uh forever the legacy for Westeros, you know, a song of ice and fire. It's what people think of. I'm really important. That's what you thought. <laughs> Personally, I don't think it will be. I think there's a chance anything is possible, but I think it's more likely to just fall into the slightly better than average territory, probably look really nice, but come nowhere near close to the highs that Game of Thrones did in terms of just reinventing television, what you can show, really amping up the budgets that were possible. So many people forget how revolutionary early Game of Thrones was. That shit changed television. It ended with a wet fart, but it changed television. <laughs> and to be perfectly fair, I don't think it's unreasonable to doubt the possible success of House of the Dragon. Aside from what I consider to be a pretty stellar cast, we have Matt Smith, who is always enthralling to watch. We have Emma Darcy, who I think is captivating in everything I've seen her in, as well as Olivia Cook, who I really appreciated in almost all the projects I've seen her in. Really, I mean, even with what happened in season eight, casting for any major IP like this, you're gonna be able to rake in some real talent. But my issue uh, comes in in the showrunner side as well as the writers because one of the lead writers and the person who was assuming the mantle of D&D's biggest writing credits fall into things like Rampage and Hercules and their producer credits are but not, not, not much better. But that being said, I want to extend an olive branch because, well, even the second biggest writer, according to IMDb, does not have that many impressive credits. There are some tertiary ones here that have some interesting stuff on in their pack catalog, like Deadwood and House, cool, and even Orange is the New Black, which had really good early seasons. But writers can just come out of left field with something that is absolutely spectacular and is a true passion project for them when everything they've done before is just not on that level. And they're finally given the opportunity to prove themselves. The very obvious obvious example that you can easily point to because it was also an HBO project is the show Chernobyl. The creator behind that was most known for the Hangover movies and then they created what I consider to be one of the best shows in the history of television. Chernobyl is magnificent. So I'm saying all this just to say it's possible. HBO is pouring a ton of resources into this. They want to pump up this IP again to help HBO Max continue to grow within the streaming wars and it's important to them. So let's say it all works out and what we end up with is a darn good Game of Thrones successor. Hell, let's give it the most optimistic outlook possible and say it's as good as peak Game of Thrones. Stop laughing. Stop. It could. It could be. The question I want to ask is, could you be brought back into the fold? Because that's what I'm not seeing be discussed as much, and that's what fascinates me the most. Martin's fans are turning on him for not putting out another book. His latest blog post really upset some people and how he seemed almost dismissive, telling people to instead focus on things like House of the Dragon. Fire and Blood is not his best received writing work. Oh, but Daniel, I like that. I didn't say no one liked it. I didn't even say it was bad. I said not best. So before you even say that, it's not what I said. 
Okay. And there's a lot of just tension in the air, it feels like, but could all of that be shattered? And let's just say all of these projects that are being worked on in this universe turned out to be pretty darn good to great. Will we see the same fervor return? Are people going to be able to stop the season eight memes and jokes and constant comparisons and start to value and consider this new material on its own? So here is my hope. Obviously, I'm always rooting for things to turn out well. I hope House of the Dragon is pretty darn good. And I hope that the hyper, hyper, just nitpicky, trying to exploit every possible flaw for clicks type of criticism does not totally overshadow its quality if it is quality. Though, if it is bad, we are going to see this taken out back and shot in the head. In fact, I would go as far as to say, if this does poorly too, it could have serious effects on the sales of Winds of Winter if it ever does come out. Because trust me, I've been watching more and more Martin fans, including content creators who have supported his works for a long time, really start to resent what's been going on. And it's not just about the delay, it's about the expectation of loyalty and success. And meanwhile, you have other authors constantly cranking stuff out and more competition than ever for adaptation. And so at the end of the day, a lot of people are going to be going, why should we even still support this IP at all? And on top of that, I've even seen some people commenting on my stuff that they're going to be boycotting things like House of the Dragon until the next book is released due to the tone. It's just the messiest situation I've seen for an IP. And I really want to know what's going to happen. If this performs well, will it turn the tide and more people will start being forgiving about Winds of Winter taking so long and the actual like heart of the A Song of Ice and Fire mythos will turn into more of, hey, let's talk about the shows rather than the books, or will those always be at the core of it and people will never consider the series complete or the, worth, the world worth exploring until those books are out. Also, here's my cat. He's just... He's just needing my stomach. Thanks, Pips. <laughs> this is going to be dogpiled so hard if it's more season eight than season four, like you've never seen. I guess that'll be my final prediction of the video. If it is bad, this is this is gonna be just torn to shreds. But anyway, I, I guess this is more or less just fantasy news, me letting you know that, yeah, it's gonna be out August 21st, and I hope it's good. And if it is, I hope it breaks away from the looming shadow of the legacy that came before and can be uh, considered on its own. And if it's bad, oh, I'll help the dog pile. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everyone, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Merch, books, and peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, J. Just the letter J, J, got it, got it, J. <laughs> <laughs>